This is Public Resource. Malamud. Uh, welcome to the TDM Today Show starring Roger Magulis. Hey, Roger, how are you doing? Morning. Morning. So, Roger, what the hell is a unigram? Okay, so a unigram is just basically a token. What we mean by that is a word, a numeric uh, expression, something that sits by itself. Uh, what we do with unigrams is we take out the um, punctuation so there's not commas and periods, and we just really tokenize the documents and make them and make a list. What we're really doing is making kind of an inverse index of all the unigrams that are associated with the science journals that we're looking at. So this is like FGRAP? Uh, it searches for an exact word? It does, but because of the, um, because it's got every variant, you're likely to find what you're looking for. But we also do something that we're probably gonna cover later which is we normalize the words a little bit into something called a lemma. And a lemma is like the dictionary form of the word. So rands, running, all turn into run. Um, but lemmas are different than unigrams, right? Yes, they are. Unigrams are the exact words. That's right. So when you have exact phrases, you know what you're looking for exactly, including the kind of uh, inflection of the word. Now, I've heard about n-grams. Is, is a unigram an n-gram? Absolutely. So an n-gram, the n just means you put in the number you want. So unigrams are one token length n-grams. And unigram, a two token length n-gram is a bigram and so forth. It goes to trigram, and then after that, they just put the number. So a four-gram and a five-gram when you have longer phrases. Now, when, one of the nice things about unigrams is, in a way, there's fewer of them than there are bigrams and trigrams. And that's because there's always that overlap. As you go down a sentence, you move word by word to create your bigrams or trigrams. And so you're just gonna have more um, overlap because the words appear many times. And how many words are we talking? If you've got a hundred million journal articles, how many unigrams do you end up with? Yeah, so what we end up with in 116 million articles, we end up with 80, almost 83 billion unigrams. Um, some of them are ridiculous because the journal articles have funny numerical expressions or repeated things in them. But, you know, you look at the top ones, it's kind of amazingly consistent how they pan out. Now, let me just give an example of that. To help with the processing of all these articles, we split everything into 16 uh, slices. Uh, the top 100 words were almost identical in each slice. So there's this kind of um, consistency to the way language is used in science journals that the same kind of terms would, would come up on top. Um, so you take these unigrams and you put them in a database to query them? Is that why this is more efficient than FGREP, for example? Yes. So they're in a database, and that means they're indexed. So they're quicker to find when you know what you're searching for. So we're taking advantage of database technology to get a faster uh, read on it. Now, one of the things we're doing is each document is associated with its string of n-grams or, or unigrams. And that means that you know, the same ones are in there many times. Those 82 billion um, document ugrams represent 1.8 billion unique unigrams. So do you get the difference is that? If yes. It, great. Um, and one of the things I should mention with the unigrams, we did cut out a few words, very few. Uh, there were about 20 words and we really copped what um, Google uses now. Uh, and they're called stop words. And these are words that appear so frequently and don't really add very much value. Words like and or stuff like that. So those were, were cut out. But um, the, what we were able to do is count the frequency in each document that each term appears, uh, which kind of cuts down on um, the storage and helps speed things up as we go along. So 
if a word like um, a plant name is in one article 14 times, it's in there once and then 14. So we know how many times it appears. And we can use that frequency to kind of help pick the right documents for what you're looking for. Okay, and then one more question. Uh, how do you generate your unigrams? Is there a software package you're using for that? Yes, I'm actually using a combination of software packages, uh, but mostly I'm using something called Spacey. And Spacey is a Python natural language processing uh, module. It comes out of Stanford. It's very often used. It's quite sophisticated, and it does a good job of it. It's got a wrapper called Textacy, which helps simplify some of the coding and provide some extra features, uh, extra features that we might use as we further dive into the data and explore ways of making sense of it. Okay, this is the TDM Today Show. Thank you, Roger Magoulis. Our work at Public Resource is made possible by a generous grant from Arcadia. Arcadia, a charitable fund of Lisbeth Rousing and Peter Baldwin. Additional support provided by contributions from citizens like you. Thank you for your support. Public Resource is a 501c3 nonprofit corporation with headquarters in the state of California and dedicated to the principle that access to knowledge is a human right.